Hi, folks. So what's going on here on my workbench? Well, Rolf is happily and busily assembling a Roland D6A, which you can see there. And things are going pretty smoothly because Rolf has the main parts of the fuselage, the horizontal stabilizer, the elevator, the rudder, the front piece uh, the, before the cowling, and the lower wing, all almost effectively snapped into place. All right, he had to use a tiny little piece of masking tape back there on the rudder to hold that in position. But he's a happy camper because this assembly of, yes, a wing nut wings kit is just going swimmingly, but there's a catch. And that's what I'm going to talk about for a few minutes, maybe more than a few minutes. I may digress, I may, this may deteriorate into sort of a rant, but so be it. You've been warned. Now, as I said, this beautiful, beautiful Roland kit is just engineered with the usual superb molding quality, molding quality, uh, quality of, uh, of the actual styrene and the detail, and it is starting to look great. And it's being held together by what? Just the physics of the uh, just insanely good construction or engineering. It's all just almost like snapped to an in. But as I said, there's a catch. You know, the, the plane's empty. There's stuff that has to go in there. And of course, it's bare styrene. It hasn't been painted. Now, here's just a sampling of some of the pieces that need to go in. Typically, wingnut wings planes, whether they're bombers, reconnaissance planes, scouts from the Great War, will have an internal frame, and then there'll be a piece, uh, pieces frame for where the engine will go, and that all fits snugly, yes, very snugly inside the fuselage. Now, if you go back to the thumbnail that I put up for this video, you'll see a picture of Sir Peter Jackson and Richard Alexander smiling as they sit at a table, or actually uh, Sir Peter sitting at the table, as I recall, a Richard may be standing behind him, and there are three or four or five wing not wings kits assembled aircraft in front of them. All of them in unpainted styrene. Yes, there lies the rub. Wing nut wing kits are engineered so precisely that they fit together perfectly provided you build them in bare plastic. Now, do I know what I'm talking about? Uh, I think so. I counted up how many wingnut wings kits I have. I had 17 wingnut wings kits. I have gifted three of those kits to friends, four of them remaining. Of the 14 kits that I kept, I have built three, and I'm working on a fourth. And I started this demo here just to show one of the issues about Wing Not Wings kits. The precision and the fit and what one has to be aware of when building these kits. I can't say that I have watched every Wing Not Wings review or build 
video on YouTube. I'm sure I haven't, but I've seen more than my share of inbox reviews that go into paroxysms of delight and ecstasy, praising the quality of Wingnut Wings kits. And the presenter never even opens the plastic baggie. The presenter just takes out the various trees, frames encased in the plastic, rubs his hands admiring, admiringly over what's inside, drones on and on about the beautiful level of detail, spends way too long talking about the magnificent instructions, puts everything in the box and then pronounces, these are the best kits ever made. How does that person know that? Unless they've actually built a kit. Now, I'm not saying that they haven't. I don't know. But there's more to it than just doing an inbox review. There's more to it than dry fitting some pieces of styrene. I know of what I speak. And there are of course, build videos and presentations of magnificent aircraft, model aircraft, representing a big range of the wing knot wings, stable, go to bombers, Felix stoves, albatrosses, Fokkers, sop with camels, you name it. I think wing nut wings did something close to 70 kits or so, distinct kits, before they went out of business. Now, a lot of those were repeats. There were innumerable uh, releases of the Albatross D5 and D5A, but so maybe there were mm, 35, 40 distinct aircraft that they produced. And there are some really amazing models out there that have been presented. But you got to know that when you build these, you're going to have a fair amount of work on your hands to trim every little piece down to the micromillimeter. And then when you prime or paint for interior pieces, be prepared to sand off that paint so you can get the fit for the components so everything will fit back together. And then you can move on and start to get to this point. This is, of course, my current build, my favorite aircraft. Yes, yet again, the SE-5A. And it's taken an inordinate amount of work because of the, we're going to build them so they fit, pieces fit like a hand in a racing glove. Of course, right out not right out of the box well before you start doing anything like gluing them together or <laughs> adding primer or paint that's okay you just have to know that that's what you've got coming so if a reviewer is going on and on about these being the most magnificent models my response would be yes but they're not going to go together like the vast majority of Tamiya aircraft will. No, you're going to have to work at it. And if you're a really skilled modeler, you probably won't even mention it. If you're an average modeler, you've got your work cut out for you. I, of course, am just an average modeler. Now, speaking of all the things one has to do, and I'm going to leave the rant there because um, with 10 more Wing Not Wings kits to go, I think I should make it clear. I love these kits. They are just beautiful airplanes, but they are big projects. And uh, proclaiming them to be superb without building them, uh, well, I guess I won't say any more about that. Now, what I have been doing 
is, uh, yeah, I hate a lot of things about model making. One of them is masking, but I have 126 strips of one millimeter masking tape now on the undersides of the SC5A so that I can add shading to the ribs and finish up that process. And that's just the lower surface of the wings. We'll have to go through the same process with another 126 strips of Tamiya masking tape to do that for the upper surfaces. All in good time. Uh, do you have anything you want to add, Nigel? I guess not. Uh, Rolf, I'd suggest you just put things away right now. Uh, and for God's sake, you don't want to start cementing anything together because you're going to have a dickens of time painting this thing. And uh, there's a lot more work to be done. Well, I may not be the greatest authority on wing knot wings. Um, I don't even claim to. But I have walked the walk in terms of assembling them. Not to the superb level of some of the bills you'll see out there. But there are minuses to all of the pluses that go into this superb collection. And I will say again, superb collection of aircraft.